Here is a 2024 Kia Forte GT in gravity gray over black sport seats. The GT, this is going to change out the engine that comes standard for the Forte. It's gonna be more powerful. You get a sport tuned suspension, they change the rear suspension. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and this is a sweet spot vehicle when you're thinking about a smaller sedan and you're getting performance. What you're getting with the GT line, which is the same aesthetics that's gonna be found on this. So you're gonna get that red pinstripe on the lower that integrates into the more aggressive bumpers. The Tiger Nose grille also gets the red elements to contrast the gloss black. The headlamp assembly is going to be projected headlights in daytime runnings. They're all LED, LED fog lights. So when you're thinking packages and value, you're just, it's a wow factor for me at least, because it's hard to find anything that's around $25 to $30,000 that packs performance and styling. It looks wider, it visually looks longer, and it looks more aggressive. Underneath the hood is gonna swap out that 2.0 liter. You're gonna get a 1.6 liter, smaller turbocharged four cylinder. You're getting 201 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque paired to a seven-speed DCT, which is a dual-clutch transmission for quicker shifts. You can option a six-speed manual, so it would be very similar to a Honda Civic Si, this is gonna be faster. You're gonna get more horsepower and torque. They got a little cheeky because they just give you one horsepower more and a few pound feet of torque more, but hey, I'm all for more power. 27 MPGs for the city and 35 MPGs for the highway. The GT package includes these 18 inch machine finish alloy wheels. You get the red that's gonna contrast the center of the Kia badging. The side skirt bulges out, but the problem that I have with the bulge out for these side skirts is you can clearly see this was an afterthought to say, oh man, we gotta make it look more aggressive. So you could kind of see that they've used a 3M tape similar to a Toyota Camry TRD. Gloss black side view mirrors. In the rear, you're going to get the trunk lid spoiler. The sport tuned suspension changing out the torsum beam to a multi-link rear suspension. They've done some work to this and they've given you a sport exhaust, dual exhaust tips. You get the pinstripe with the gloss black. When you're going into the Civic, it's going to look a little bit more grown up. You can still make this thing look athletic. And the SI, it's a great vehicle, don't get me wrong. But Kia is just going a step up a little bit more so, in which I don't know why the Honda didn't do that because they just went through a full refresh. They should have thrown a few more horsepower few more pound feet of torque, that way it would have been right on par or better than the Forte. So when you're thinking about value, you're still saving at least five grand in the comparison to that. As for a Mazda 3 Turbo, that thing's gonna go over $30,000 and you'll hit in $40,000 margins in which this is now a his and her vehicle. So you can buy one for you, for your spouse, for your kid, whatever, and everybody can have some fun with their sports Forte. Quick release, going into nearly 15 and a half cubic feet of storage, which is pretty deep for a smaller vehicle. No spare tire, that will be an option. Pull these levers here, and you can split fold that rear bench. I'm a little tall, so I'm gonna just go inside. That's going to increase the cargo to the Forte. We need to go inside, start up this Turbo 4, so you can hear that exhaust note. Headroom and legroom. Even though it's a smaller sedan, you have a lot of room in the front. The dash is going to be a little bit more sporty because of the satin aluminum and the circular air vents on the side. I'm not a huge fan of the infotainment screens coming out of the dashboard, but it's okay. It's a 10.25 Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio at Kia Connect, and you also have quiet mode, which will lower the speakers in the rear if you have any kids sleeping in the vehicle. Another nice thing about this particular infotainment screen is you can do a two screen setup so you can see the media for the passenger or for you and you can change that out as well. 
Putting into reverse, this is a con I have because it only covers that portion of the screen, but you will be able to change different camera layouts so you can see pretty much all you need in the trajectory expands when you turn the steering wheel. It's just, I don't know why you would need your navigation while you're reversing. Dual climate control settings, QI wireless charger. I like this setup here because it really utilizes space. 12 volt USB storage area for another cell phone, driver mode select, the contrast stitching comes into play, auto hold so you don't have to hold the brake and you can hit this button here and look at that, you can see the reverse camera on the fly. Going into the driver modes, you have smart, normal and sport, which you'll see on the drive, we're gonna probably leave it just at that. It's gonna be sporty and this is tucked back, open up. It's a little bit smaller, but it's enough to put a larger wallet, maybe a pocketbook. Leather wrap steering wheel, flat bottom GT badging, contrast stitching with the red, perforated on the side, paddle shifts, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The gauge cluster, I kind of wish that they had a little bit more information here because when you go into sport variants like the Civic, or if you go up the tier and you spend even more money like a Corolla or a GR Corolla, it just has a lot more going on. The door panel and the dash configured together. I do like the mesh that comes over the speaker, but the materials are going to be more harder. It's going to be a little bit soft here. Contrast stitching, one touch up and down just for the driver window in a medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. For the back seats, headroom is still good. Same thing with leg space, and this is with the seat in a pretty far position back. Storage only behind the passenger seat, one USB air vents, armrests with cup holders. The bolstering comes back into the rear, which when you go into the Civic, that's not gonna happen. However, you are going to have that strip material pretty much everywhere again, which I just feel it's a bit plain because you only have the contrast stitching here. You don't get the grill pattern that you get in the front, but the gloss black does continue with a smaller storage pocket. Sliding into the center, feet space isn't too bad. You're not going to be able to have a comfortable sit like this because if you do that, look how high up you sit here. It's just gonna be undesirable, very uncomfortable. Even here, if you're over six foot tall, it's gonna be a little bit questionable. Sharing some butt and shoulder space also. It is a smaller sedan, so you expect that, but headroom isn't necessarily too bad. It's going to be more optimal on the sides. No 2.0 liter here. We have the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. 201 horsepower, 195 pound-feet of torque. These numbers are more than a Civic. And listen to that exhaust. You can hear it because I have it in sport mode right at you. The steering is pretty light, so you can move in and out. It's a smaller vehicle. It doesn't feel that wide on the road. So overall package is pretty good. You're gonna hear a significant amount of road noise coming in. 18 inch wheels also help with that. I would just keep it in sport mode so you can kind of hear the exhaust a little bit more so. Braking on the vehicle. It's not too bad, but it's not as grippy as I would like it to be. And I'm not saying throw Brimbo brakes, but maybe enlarge the brakes a little bit more than they are. It's still a light vehicle. Turn radius and to show you some of that performance all in together. It's gonna be about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. Now the Torque isn't going to be such a hit where you're going back like it's a Hellcat or something. Don't expect that. The DCT transmission is good because it's quicker in the shifts, but I'm not gonna knock the ZF transmission, which they could have adapted here also, and it's just as good because the shift pattern can be just as fast. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting with the pros about the Forte GT. Not only am I getting the look, but I'm getting some performance underneath it, and it's a value that's not hurting my wallet. If I wanna spend a little extra dough, I go to the six-speed manual, and then it's more engaged. 
but as it sets, you'll still be engaged, but if the paddle shifts. Some other pros is it has an airy feel in the interior, even though it's a little sports sedan. Usually you don't get that feel in that in this type of vehicle. So once you start going sporty, everything gets a little bit more firm. But even with this suspension changing out, because they've added a multi-link rear suspension, it's actually a comfortable ride. It's not sliding around all over the place, so dynamically speaking, it is pretty sound. Some cons about the vehicle is the materials are firm. They could have used a little bit better parts inside. Maybe integrate this infotainment screen downwards, like I was saying in the interior. Not a huge fan of them just sticking up out of the dash. It does keep a sporty look, but then you have buttons kind of scattered everywhere, which is a good thing too, because you don't have to do everything through the infotainment, but in the same respect, you have it coming out of the dash, maybe integrate those buttons in the infotainment, not have so many different buttons to begin with because then it just gets over the top. Some other cons is I would have liked to see power seat adjustment at least for the driver because, I mean, six way manual adjustments, come on. I get it, we're still under 30 grand. But when you start going into Honda or Toyota, you're going to get power seat adjustments. Give me an extra port or two in the back. It's only got one port. You can't make an adapter to share that. It's just not gonna work. You won't be charging anything. I do like how they set up this QI wireless charger though, because it gives optimal storage in the center, but then this center cluster where you put your arms to rest, even for me being tall, it becomes more of an elbow rest than anything because it's so far back, in which I'm probably not gonna be using a lot of the storage inside it. But what's a 1.6 liter turbo for without giving her a go? Now obviously because of the weather conditions it's going to be a lot more tire happy but you have sports tires which is a huge plus. The big problem that I have with the GT is that I, it feels like they just went enough. They didn't put the full capabilities underneath the hood and maybe tune it a little bit more so so it's closer to a 50 50 weight distribution and just i hate to say increase the price a couple grand but don't do it when you're going into the manual do it so you have a full performance line because when you are getting into a forte you're kind of getting your feet wet and the next level would be the k5 gt which has a crazy amount of power it's like they just unleashed everything there which with these smaller vehicles they're kind of those hidden gems I like them because they're fun, they're practical, and they give you a good amount of performance and value blended in. Going into any rival, you're going to spend at least 5, 10 or more to get similar performance and attributes of what you're getting in the interior and everything as a package. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Regal Kia for giving us this 2024 Kia Forte GT for our car review.